make an appearance in one of my videos. Oh, yeah! <laughs> First paddle of the year. It's like a beautiful day. Put in about 12.57. Here at Caribou Landing. Okanal Lake. So first paddle of the year. I'm really excited about this. Uh, it's a beautiful day. I actually was planning to go to Long Lake. Um, to do uh, a fishing derby with some friends and uh, all backcountry canoeing was closed in opening and uh, the day before uh, it's going to leave it, it opened again and specifically it was the Manigatogan uh, canoe route uh, so I'm going from Quinell Lake um, into the Manigatogan and then into uh, Long Lake so we'll land there uh, tomorrow. So I, I plan on spending a night. And uh, yeah, haven't been here in, boy, wouldn't be surprised if it was 30 years. So I, I don't really remember this, this road uh, at all. And uh, obviously the conditions would have changed and be a lot different right now. Um, some concerns on this trip is the high water. So curious, uh, I am going upstream. So curious what the flow rate is. Looks like the water has gone down just on the drive up, so hopefully the rapids aren't too bad and I'm able to access the portages easily and uh, hopefully not fight the current too much. I got it as a gift from my parents. Uh, as you see here, I'm, I'm using a, just a kayak paddle, the Cav Pro, I think it's, it's from Cabela's. Um, may come in handy especially as I'm going upstream against the current um, I was debating getting one I wasn't quite sure I kind of like just to feel the, the paddle and the traditional way um, of paddling uh, but so far my average speed right now is six and a half kilometers seven kilometers when usually I'm right right on par with the average around five kilometers per hour so um, so far so good also with uh, making recording videos too. I don't have to swing the paddle over the camera, which, uh, which is good too. So, um, so yeah, I'm a little bit clumsy with it at the moment, 25 minutes into it and definitely sold on the, uh, kayak paddle. Wow. It's comfortable. It's great. There's definitely a technique to avoid the paddle drip. So, uh, I mean, they have these on there to prevent it. But, I mean, I got half an inch of water in my canoe already, so I, I don't think it's the paddle's fault. <laughs> it's like a nice campsite. We're on a small island that looks like campsite two uh, that you have to book through uh, Pew Lake Lodge. So I've been paddling for about an hour, and I think I'm starting to narrow here, so I'm starting to get into the Manicotaugan River here in just a moment, I think. Or no, it looks like it narrows and then goes into the start of Manicotaugan Lake. And then you can branch off from the river from there. So, so far I feel like I'm making good time, but I'll see once I get to the mouth of the river uh, how my time is against Paddle Planner. I think Paddle Planner estimated about one and a half hours roughly to get to the mouth of the river. Um, that's based on five kilometers an hour, so I'm going a little faster than that, so I, I think I'm going to make up uh, a good time. I think I see a moose, I'm just trying to get a little closer. My eyes are horrible and I'm wearing these polarized glasses, so I can't really see if I'm picking it up on camera, but I'm um, getting a little closer. Just got to watch myself here because I'm in an interesting spot here where it looks like a whole bunch of tree stumps and stuff sticking out of the water. So, uh, 
that's, that's interesting, but I just don't want to get hung up on that. So I'm going to get it and see if I can get a closer shot. Right where you would think a moose would be. It's like a little wildlife paradise here. There's some swans hanging out, and uh, yeah, that's cool. There we go, first sign of wildlife. All right, a little bit of a detour, but that was worth it. That is cool. Let's all let the moose be. A little bit of current here. I think there's some rapids up here, which isn't marked on the map, so I'm guessing it's the high water. So I'll go take a look at it, see if uh, I need to get out and portage this, uh, or just line it or whatnot. Well, then my first portage um, wasn't actually portage, but with the high water. Um, you definitely have to get out. It was uh, too fast moving. Uh, there was a fishing boat that was able to go up and down uh, through the current, um, but I didn't bother trying to line it or anything like that. So uh, some folks over the cabin that they've owned for 70 years um, let me pass through and chat with them for a while. So uh, that was nice of them. Uh, they offered to help, but I said I'd rather carry everything myself because it's my first trip, so I need a iron out all the kinks and get into the swing of things so it actually felt nice um, but yeah nice nice people um, chatted with them for a bit uh, a little bit behind schedule now but uh, there's no real rush and it's good just to meet some new uh, new folks and get to know them a little bit so it's like a couple of boats fishing I mean the fish are are still in the rivers because everything's so late right now so that's probably a great spot to be and then right here is campsite five so this looks like a really nice site on the island site um, this is first come first serve site again um, so mighty tempted to, to stay here but i'm gonna go lots well, of activity around here there's Two boats at the mouth. Two boats right by the rapids and another two boats coming this way. So I'm at the first portage. Just looking for uh, any markings in the portage trail. So on the parks map, it looked like it was on the left side kind of makes sense uh, but just wondering how close I can get to it with the higher water oh that kind of looks like a trail right there but I'm gonna go up a little closer to the rapids check it out yeah I'm guessing that's it the more I look at it Game trail or what? So. I think I'll just peek my head up here and take a look. where this portage is so I'm just going to um, cut into the bush and see if I can pick a trail up. Um, there's just a little bit too much fallen trees like like that guy there. Where am I here? Oh right there. So I'm going to take a little walk see if I can pick up on a trail and, and we'll go from there.
right there. Yeah. I wonder if this is a trail here. Bushwalk in here. Hey, Bert. Still trying to figure this out. Just trying to make my way to the other side here. I can't find any sign. So I'm gonna go back to my canoe and think about this more. Really think. I can get through hiking, but uh, the canoe may be a problem. So I'm gonna go look and see if I missed the trail somewhere. All right, I looked around, couldn't find another route way through. So I'm just gonna go back where I walked around <clears throat> See if I can find a way. Uh, hopefully I can get through. So far it's nothing but mosquitoes and wood ticks. I've had two wood ticks already that I could see. Which means I probably have more than that on me right now. So I'm going to do some exploring. See if I can find my way. And just, uh, just got to do it. Just got to bushwhack through. Kind of sucks, but... It's either I do it now or I give up and retreat to a nice campsite number five for the night and then get picked up tomorrow. So I want to give it a try, see if I can get through it. It's not very far, it's just thick. That's why there's so much moose crap here. It's nothing but moose I can walk through here. So going to uh, shut the camera off just so I can uh, pay attention to my surroundings and make sure I don't get turned around. So I saw a glass bottle, I know it's not much, but this is the only sign I've seen so far. So maybe this trail goes right along. I'm just following the the, uh, the river as it's easy to navigate. So hopefully it uh, leads to something. It's a lot easier to follow the river than go through the bush and lose your bearings. It's so thick. So fingers crossed. So I popped out. Uh, Covered me. Oh, <laughs> on the river, popped out, and it looks like a trail. So, maybe I'll switch camera. Follow the river, popped out here. So, I came from here. That's where those bottles caught my eye. And I looked over here, and this looks like a trail. Right there. It's a good sign, so. I may have found the spot, but it's awfully close to the water there because it's, it's uh, the water's quite high, so I don't know if we'll be able to put in there, but at least I found the makings of the trail. Broken bottles. Walk, walk around the edge here. And up. Okay, maybe we're way up and look. Flagging tape. So this is where the put-in is. So obviously, a little concerning with fast-moving water. Probably get through there, but. Not much of a margin of error. 
get sucked into there. And I've been paddling much, so I don't know if I'll risk that. We'll come up here, either walk, walk up and around, and get in over there to be a little safer. So I may be able to put in here. So I just cut across there. Put in here and then I can maybe line the canoe up there, but there's, there's an awful lot of trees. So I might just try to walk around and see if I can get through. All right, I think I came up with a plan. I'll uh, I can get to uh, the top of the rapids pretty easily. Um, but they're a little close for my comfort. I don't trust uh, my paddling just yet. And um, so I'll be able to put the canoe in and then I'm going to line it up to, uh, uh, to a safer location. So I'm going to uh, record just to show you what uh, the porto portage looks like. sign, flagging tape. I'm guessing that was all ground for one time and it's high water. It's just the road and all that. Makes it a little bit more challenging, but look at that water coming. Once it gets in here, it's not too bad. Big push. I'm gonna take it and then I'll line it up to where my bag is. So watch my step here. It's steep. My gear. Also, I put pants on when I went back the first time. Oh, tons of poison ivy, ticks, mosquitoes, branches, so. I learned from last time where I got my shins really beat up, uh, just throw on the pants just for a little extra protection and uh, I don't feel like getting poison, poison ivy or poison oak or anything like that. It was definitely more of a slog than I would, would have liked, but uh, I'm glad I stuck with it. You kind of reach that moment, especially in an area like this where I'm not too far from people that you want to hit the call a friend button to come pick you up. <laughs> uh, once I followed the shore and kind of found a path, it was a lot easier. Uh, it wasn't marked on the uh the other side when i was coming in but i think i actually just by chance kind of looked like a path some of the clearing um so it worked out it was uh 240 meters um so not super long but it was definitely a little thick in spots some of the water took away the bank you know so you really have to watch your footing uh on the rocks because it's uh, very easy to slide in the water, twist an ankle.
next set of rapids. And just watching the shore, trying to see any sign. I mean, the most common way is people go downstream or they start upstream at Long Lake and go towards Manicotagan. So I'm sure the signage is all, all over on that side. I don't know how many people go, go upstream. Uh, so it might not be marked just like the last one got. Hopefully it's a little easier to get through. So looks like a trail going right up here. Possibly up there too. So I'm gonna hop out here and go check it out. looks like the trail, so that's good. It's pretty well developed, so I'm thinking that's it. I don't know if it came in there, but this is probably a good bet. <coughs> so I'm just gonna grab my gear, make one trip. Hey Bear, coming through. Oh. See a down tree already. Beauty, look at that. This is a gift. A gift, I tell you. <laughs> oh, very nice. Oh, yeah. Waterfall down there. Just finished that portage. Nice trail, 170 meters. So it's nice and smooth. It's good. You gotta check the map just to see where I'm at and uh, kind of come up with a game plan uh, just too many mosquitoes on the shore there um, paddle planner had a campsite a little further back be before the portage but I didn't see it it was all overgrown so that's that's probably pretty old um, so I'm just gonna cross reference with the uh, the opening park map not very detailed but at least if there's a campsite, I'll show that. Um, I, I put it away when I was carrying everything on the portage, so I just need to take a peek at that and, and kind of refresh myself. Okay. Right there. So that was the first portage, or actually second, I had to portage that one, but I guess the second one, I just finished the third one. Um, right there, and the next one is coming up. Let's see, one portage too. Well, the next one's the third one. And then that brings me into the far end on the Manicotoga River, which I consider almost part of Long Lake. So, they go for it. I mean, it's approximately six o'clock. I still have time, so I'm gonna see how that paddling goes. Um, that one might be a tricky one, so we will see. Hey guys. I don't know if you can pick it up on the the video, but oh I can't now there's a plane. <laughs> but I could hear the, the falls. That one I think my dad was telling me I was too young when I was uh, when I took that portage, but it's kind of high ridges, so he has some concerns about getting through there. Uh, he says I'll be walking through water bushwhacking so 
we will see. I don't know about the uh, walking through water, but bushwhacking I can see. But uh, yeah, I'm curious to go back and, and kind of see the falls. My dad was telling me a story where we were portaging and there was a, a young man and woman uh, showering in the falls. So <laughs> I don't really remember that, but you guys can uh, connect the dots there. So. Um, looking forward to a, a trip down memory lane. Wondering if I'm the first one down this way this year. I think it's been banned because of the water. And I'm pretty much like 24 to 48 hours on the water when it was announced. So there you go. There's my claim to flame, fame. First one to paddle upstream from Quesnel to Long Lake, 2022. I am declaring, no one else can own this title. I own it alone. <laughs> See, we got some, some current here. Let's be getting close. I hope this is the last portage. I've been fooled once or twice before. So I find these Manitoba Parks maps are just so basic and scales off and I've printed out old ones before that the campsites weren't accurate and stuff so I find that really hard um, so it's one of the reasons why I like doing these videos because sometimes you just need a visual uh, to kind of see it firsthand. The high water is really evident right here that is so definitely want to stay away from the shore just in case uh get hung up or hit a tree you don't want to get pinned it's not much current here but it doesn't take much sometimes so there's those big falls look at that we shall see i don't know if it's it's got to be the right side also a big uh, bald eagle. I don't know if you can see that on well, that branch right there. I'm not really sure where to go. It shows the falls on the map. And then the portage just after on the right. Pretty high ridge on the, the left side there. So I'm wondering if I could walk alongside the falls. <laughs> Marked it with green tape, that's all I had at home. It's not the best tape, obviously, but. Another rapids, or if this is just uh, those falls my dad was, was talking about, is still coming up. I don't know. Okay. Oh, 
That is nice put in. Getting better and better. So I'm not sure exactly where I am. So there was a campsite I marked. Um, it's one I remember from fishing on Long Lake. Last year, there's an island campsite. So I'm not sure if I'm completely done portages or that falls my dad was talking about is still coming up, but I'm thinking this is the falls here. Um, I don't know, so. We'll see. If this is it, then and I'm way ahead, ahead of schedule. That should be good uh, for a change. So we'll see. Still waiting for that curveball. Just walking back to get the canoe, and I think I see the top of the fire pit, so I'm going to go check it out. Tent pad right there. Oh, it's a great spot. Of course, garbage. Garbage, garbage, garbage. We just finished the portage at the falls. And uh, yeah, it's 80 meters. A little bit of a, an incline walking through some water so you got to be careful um, that's where your footwear comes really important um, I wear the hiking shoes and uh, yeah I wouldn't go back to anything else you get sandals or a cheaper pair of shoes you're not gonna get the same uh, traction so just paddling out here uh, I'm gonna check the map and to get out of the current a little bit uh, I got to fill up with water I brought my aqua tabs I didn't bring a filter since it's only a overnighter. So I use an Nalgene bottle and just put some decals on there. Portager, my favorite beer. Um, yeah, so it's one liter and the aqua tab ratio is uh, one tab for one liter water. So it makes it easy, easy math, no guesswork. And then just got some uh, turkey jerky, got some protein. Uh, I did eat some dehydrated banana chips as well and uh, also just slathered on some bug spray since the mosquitoes are eating me alive and I've had four ticks already uh, crawling up my arm. So I'm a little worried to uh, see what's under my clothes. I forgot how nice it is to paddle when the days are longer in spring and summer. I mean, it's 6.30 right now. I've been going for Close to six hours. I have to look at the time. I think, but yeah, just under six hours. Um, I mean, if this was fall time and I fall solo, six thirty, I'd be scrambling to get a campsite because that sun drops quick. But uh, it's amazing. I still got like three hours of sunlight, and it's a clear, clear day today too. So. That'll spill well into 10 o'clock. I still have good visibility. Oh. Maybe I need to rethink my longer solo trips. Have them during this time, spring, summer, and then uh, do a shorter one in the fall. Oh. I think I know where I am now. Yeah, no more portages. It looks like there is another portage, so. I guess I was wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. So I can see on the map now, I guess the falls isn't considered a portage. So I don't, I don't know why it wouldn't be considered a portage and they'd have that on there. But anyways, that's what it is. Uh, so let's say there's a portage here and then there's a campsite. I don't even know. 
maybe they're throwing right about here. There'd be a campsite, and then this for sure would be the last portage. Um, and then there's a campsite on the further down, which I might try to make some time sometime. Trying to get to the other side here. I think that's where the portage is on the map. I mean, it wouldn't be too much to walk up there, but there's a whole bunch of deadfall. I don't know if I can get to it. And there is kind of a cut branch right there. I'm wondering if that's, looks like a trail going up there. So I'm guessing that's the portage. We'll have a look-see. Okay, there's the third portage. There's a boat up here. Hello, bear. Coming through. There's a view that way. And this is the way. Oh, yeah. I see some cut logs or something down there. Oh, not bad. And some seats. There. Guess you can camp in here, find a tent pad. Lake. Still considered the Manica target, but still, to me, it's the start of the lake. So, coming from the uh, Long Lake side, so you got the camp sign there, portage, little marker there. So, I'm a little offended that uh, for those folks like me who want to go backwards and go upstream, there's very little markings. Like, Come on, we need love too, you know. Okie dokie, it's 7.15. I just finished the last portage, and I mean it this time, this is the last one. <laughs> and uh, there's a campsite here, but it's inland. So I'm sure it gets pretty buggy. So I'm not really uh, a fan of that right now. Um, so just a short paddle down, there is an island campsite, just a small one. Um, so hopefully it's accessible and everything's good there. Um, the water levels seem, seem okay, they're definitely higher, but uh, doesn't seem too crazy. 230, 230 meters, and that was the portage and campsite two, if you're referencing the, uh, the parks map. So I'm going to find campsite one, which is an island um, campsite. 
So it looked pretty nice last time I was fishing here. Uh, I checked it out. Oh, got some current here. Oh, wasn't paying attention. <laughs> oh, too busy yapping in the camera. Oh, a whole stretch of the river, and that was the toughest part. <laughs> Just thinking about the portages, and just like to correct my dad, he said I'd be walking in water and bushwhacking at falls. That may have been one of the easiest portages today. It was easy to walk, hard, no guesswork. Everything was smooth, so just saying. Well, it's 10 after 8, and it uh, looks like, according to my GPS, campsite's about a kilometer away, so I'm getting close, which is nice. It's a pretty good paddle. You can hear all the sounds. The forest is alive. Lots of ducks, lots of geese, swans. I think I've seen a dozen swans already on this stretch. I uh, usually only see uh, two to four, but that's quite a bit. But uh, yeah, it's calmed right down. I was trolling. Uh, I thought I had a couple bites, but uh, nothing. Uh, but I figured I'd, I'll get closer to camp, get set up. I got some clothes and stuff to dry. I get a fire going. And uh, if I remember correctly, last year when I was fishing, we were catching them right off that campsite, just going back and forth along the shore. So I'm hoping uh, that works. Uh, I get out of the canoe for a while because I've been been sitting in here for for quite a while. Um, but yeah, so give that a shot. Uh, this time of year, with the fish being everything being kind of later, I really don't know if they're biting lots or. Or I've heard they're bite they're biting right now, but it's just a matter of finding them. The thing, so I mean the water is considerably higher, uh, so that changes things. Um, plus they're late coming off the river, so a lot of variables there. And uh, I'm gonna try right off right off the campsite. I'm starting to get tired, so I've got to stretch the legs anyways. Uh, get something to eat. If I don't catch anything. Um, Tonight, uh, I have lots of time tomorrow uh, that I can try getting up early for fishing and, and see if I can get a fish for breakfast. So we'll see. You can't really make it out, but there's definitely symbols there. That's pretty cool. I wonder if it goes all the way up. Cool find. I see a dark spot on shore. Can't tell what that is.
What is Moose lying down. A clump of mud. Something swimming beside it, so I'm wondering. Found the beavers? Oh yeah, that's a, that's a big beaver. Wow. Oh, you can hear a grouse thumping the distance too. Everything's coming alive. I was just checking that out because the capsite's right here. So I'm just curious if it was a bear. <laughs> no, not that it matters. I mean, bears are around all the time, but it's a consideration if I see one in the area and I start cooking fish that, you know, just got to be a little, a little careful, that's all. Is it the sun starting to drop? Looks like I'm going to get a good view of the sunset from this spot. Beauty. Coming up to the campsite. You can check this site out, so very nice takeout spot. Good spot to store the canoe and secure it at night. So this would be campsite number one if you're starting at Long Lake. Oh, this is a nice spot. Not one, but two fire, fire pits. Got some wood. It's an interesting rock, a little table there. Nice spot. And there's a uh, nice spot. Get a nice view into the sunset. Oh, very nice sight. Looks like I can put uh, lots of options for tent pads. I might just put the tent right there. Seems like a good spot. There's also a spot over over here. A little bit of an incline, but uh, that's all right. And look at all the droppings right there. Some over there. More over there. <laughs> so yeah, this is good. Good site. It's about 8.40 and uh, just noticing my face. Some pretty good raccoon eyes going on there. Uh, yeah, so I think I'm gonna uh, start a fire first, to get some smoke going, keep the keep the bugs away, help keep the bugs away. Um, also got my shoes, socks, and the lower half of my pants to get dry. And then I'll uh, start working on the tent. I'll just make one of my freeze dried meals and uh, kind of enjoy the fire and just eat that way. Maybe I'll do that and then get up early and uh, try to catch some, some fish and do a fish fry for breakfast. So uh, maybe I'll do that. It's it's good timing. Um, don't have the pressure to rush. So all in all, it's been uh, pretty good that way. And 
yeah, looking forward to uh, sitting down by the fire. First uh, backcountry fire of the year. So exciting. Good amount of natural fire starter here. It's gonna go quick. That's so dry. Awesome. Feels nice. Oh yeah, now you can't see me. I'm covered by the smoke. Thank you to whoever processed this wood. This is awesome. Good wood. All right, second order of business. I am changing my wet shoes and socks. Then I'm going to do a tick check after. These are my camp shoes. These Keen sandals. They've been demoted. I no longer use these as portage shoes. I mean, they let in all the rocks. Um, your feet slip inside. And you get stones underneath your feet through these rocks. Um, this is actually a really long tensioner that gets snagged on everything. So that's actually a safety hazard. Um, like if you got stuck, if you dumped in some fast moving water, this could easily get caught. So um, those have been de demoted, uh, no ankle support. Uh, and I have these Solomon hiking shoes. So um, always gonna have these now. These have been a lifesaver on every single trip. My last past two trips, um, even today, especially on some of the slippery rocks, like it's a must have. So I highly recommend that if you're still into the the sandals. So the nice thing about these pants is they come off so I can dry them. Um, the mosquitoes might get at me but they don't seem too bad right now. So if I can quickly dry these, they dry really fast. These are just Columbia convertible pants. Shouldn't take long to dry and then I can zip them back on. And I can do the tick check but not gonna have the camera rolling for that one. Could be ugly. <laughs> Another thing too is wearing hikers and socks, you don't get leeches when you're stepping in the water. So when I went with my son, we had a ton of leeches. Oh, and there's a tick right here. So I'm gonna have to get the tweezers out. There's a close up there. Buried right in there. Ugh, hate these little buggers. All right, gonna get into my gonna get into my first aid kit here. First aid slash survival slash 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 <laughs> multi-use kit. But these are all the things that I wear in case I take a dump and get separated from my gear. Serious, anyways. Here's my tweezers. I got some orange ones. So I'm just gonna go gonna grab this by the grab him by the head. Take him out. So I got him there. Look at these guys. Like, like why why do you need to be here same with mosquitoes it's not a good start just took off my wet socks and there's a tick so i'm gonna check the rest of my body here all 
we go. Got pant legs drying. And we got the socks drying. You know, check out the sunset. I see it's dropping. I'm behind schedule, doing the tick check. I don't know if I have two ticks on my back. I was trying to use the camera to see, but I couldn't tell. I had moles on my back, so it's probably that, but who knows, I'll have to wait to get to the cabin and check. Oh, look at that nice sunset. That's a beauty. So packed fairly light. Packed fairly light this trip, obviously it's just an overnighter. So I have a uh, mountain house, rice and chicken. Good there. Just packed this one pot. It also has a sleeve and a lid to double as a coffee cup. So I'm gonna make breakfast with the water in here and then make coffee for one pot. And I'll let it sit for about 10 minutes. Pretty quick, so. Well, it's about 10 to 11 so i'm just uh gonna turn in I'm actually kind of really tired that was about uh i'm not off to look at the time but a good seven hours um from when i started which was i think i got on the water about quarter to one o'clock um which was a later start but uh um sunset was at 9 30 so i wasn't too worried anyways all in all good day um couldn't ask for a better day uh, and, and tomorrow I got a nice, easy paddle, um, assuming it doesn't get windy or whatnot, um, to Long Lake, or uh, somebody will maybe drive my way um, with a boat and give me a ride. But uh, we'll see. Uh, plan on getting up early, hopefully, uh, tomorrow morning. I'd like to catch some fish and have a fish fry before I, I shove off. So, um, But yeah, good night. <laughs> lying here listening to the sounds I wonder if the camera is picking that up it's loud out there very loud it's kind of relaxing actually it's starting to put me to sleep <laughs> Just after, I think it's quarter after five. Just gonna get up. Nice cool morning. I'm gonna get uh, get up, make a fire, warm up a little bit, and then uh, gonna try to catch some fish. So hopefully I can uh, then catch something and uh, have a nice uh, fish breakfast.
First fish of the season. <laughs> Just a little pike. It's like a little 12 inch pike. Before I head out on the water, I'm gonna just take the fly off the uh, the tent. It's wet from uh, all the condensation last night. So I'm gonna string it up on the line and try to dry it out before I have to pack it up. <clears throat> See if I can catch some fish. First thing I want to do is just find some water that doesn't have all this stuff in it. I guess one of the downsides of not bringing the water filter is trying to find clear water. So, but uh, I'm sure it won't be an issue. Just gotta paddle around a little bit. I think I got a fish on. Doesn't feel very big. Another little jack. There you go, just a little guy. You bye. Another jack, Got some pickerel here. So this is what I'm using. It's worked, uh, worked well. So keep going with it. We'll see. Uh, Got to be a pick in here somewhere. Oh, fish on. Strong. Oh, doesn't feel that big. Another jack. They're getting bigger and bigger slowly. <laughs> there, biggest one yet. So, oh, look at that. <laughs> There you go, never caught one of those before. I think I got company behind me. Wonder if this is one of my guys. Could be. Could be my dad. Looks like our boat. Hello! Hey. How are you doing? How are you doing? Trying to catch a pickerel. <laughs> <laughs> Catching nothing but jack. You want to come for breakfast? Do they have breakfast right now or what? Yeah, he said within a half hour, I said I'll zip down the lake to see if I can find you. Okay, well, I, I still got to pack up. Oh, there we go. My dad went to come check things out. I sent him a message on my spot device but uh, there's only one little spot on Long Lake where you can get reception and he didn't wait long enough thinking it was more like a smartphone or, or something like that um, or just cellular reception but the spot device can take 15-20 minutes to sometimes get a signal and, and load and send and things like that so, so I guess he was just curious wondering where how I made out he was a little concerned about the high water but not, so it looks like I got a ride home, which is good. I'll uh, just quickly pack up and uh, get everything uh, on the boat. Probably fit the uh, canoe on the boat too, so, uh, which is good.